One of the many cool things about staying in a tent is being able to watch how professional athletes who are at the very peak of the game train on a daily basis, be it at a Cameroonian track, Moibon Road, or just running around the Eaton Village itself. Earlier this week, I was able to sit down with Abdi Nagir, a Dutch marathon runner who won silver at the Tokyo Olympics and who holds multiple national records in the Netherlands. During this interview, we discussed how he approached his training leading up to the New York Marathon. Uh, so first of all, like, how are you feeling out of New York? Like, it's next week. It's your fourth time running yet? Uh, I'm really excited. It is uh, it's my one of my favorite marathons. It's so amazing. It's so big. And when I was young, it was like my dream. And now I'm going for the fourth time. Uh, very strong field after the Olympics. So a little yeah. bit tired after the Olympics. But I had I had good time. I trained well. I think I'm one of my best shape when I'm in Europe. You had an amazing so. season this year. You had a PP half marathon, a PB in a marathon in Rotterdam as well. Do you have any yeah. kind of aim for New York or just go out and give it your best? Uh, New York is podium. You, you go for podium and uh, you can't run faster. I mean, if you are crossing five bridges, yeah. it will be very hard to run personal best. So, but last year we, we ran fast. The, the winner will run fast. Uh, so, um, yeah, we will see. Th things are changing now. And even hard courses will be, people are running fast. Yeah. So it will be very excited to see that. Yeah. Uh, and one of the things that just like, things change, like, from your first marathon like 10 years back, 2014, I believe. Yeah. To now it's 10 years, like science has jumped miles, you know, carry out carbon shoes now and everything. Like, has your training changed over the past 10 years, the way you approach the marathons? Uh, not really, not really. And even, even now I went back to my old school style, uh, more like when I was with, with Elliot, mm -hmm. that program. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, these fast times is, are, are, are just crazy. I mean, when we saw two nine women, I was like, was oh my God, I was breaking 2.9 in Rotterdam, I think 2017. And I was the first Dutchman to break even in Rotterdam 2.9. Yeah. So it, it, it's really crazy. And another thing is that um, I'm running, this is my 23 marathon. And I'm still running BP. Uh -huh. But so I have seen all. I have seen when the world record was, I think, 2.4. Two, I was running, I think. So it's really crazy. It's really, uh, we don't know where it's landing. And even now I'm thinking, oh, I have to look for a fast course. <laughs> do, you, do you think we might see like a 205 time from a female runner in the next No, we can't, we, we can't see it anymore because who thought people, we, women will run to nine? Yeah. I mean, there are still male athletes who are getting contract when they run to nine. Yeah. And there's no other race, if it's 100 meter or 100 meter, that you cannot run woman time and you get contract yeah. while you are 30. <laughs> so it is just phew. crazy yeah. and like how, how did your kind of training block leading up to New York kind of look like um, how was it? five weeks of like 190 185 five weeks long is that your kind of your usual approach to Martin yeah yeah and actually I don't I don't calculate mostly I check on Saturday actually okay uh, just oh what's, what, what's the what's the end and Sunday you already know what you're doing so you, you will not add in the evening something yeah so mostly then i see oh nice 195 198 190 195 uh, and do you have any, any kind of a specific kind of workout that you love doing like good like, uh, like a key workout for you key, more keywords not like that i like but those that you want to do and to get the confidence <laughs> it's two different things <laughs> so it's 40 k's uh but especially uh to two k's uh one mile i hate that yeah like 10 times one mile um, things like that, yeah. What would be kind of the paces that you'd be kind of aiming for? Just kind of a one mile repeat, let's say. Uh, it depends. It depends the, the week. It depends the, if you run 40k that week or if you're running 40k this Sunday. Yeah. Uh, mostly I do on, on Friday my track sessions or Tuesday. So um, 68, 69 lap will be nice. Okay. Uh, then you're in good shape. Because okay, we, we are getting less than two minute recovery. And like uh, how much of your kind of workouts would be easy and how much would be kind of speed based? I really don't. I don't check that. In the evenings, it's easy. Ten k's, eight k's, and mornings mostly between average four zero five to four ten, mm -hmm. four twelve. If it's not sixteen k, eighteen k, seventeen k, and um, yeah, mostly we don't. I don't check that much. It's just yeah. you know what you're doing and. You just do it. But like one of the questions I was going to ask is how much of your like, training is data based? Because like so many people are moving to like checking your lactate all the time, checking your VO2. <laughs> I think things when I'm done, I'm taking breakfast, then I check okay. what my core is saying. And if it's 120% excellent, no, that's good. 
<laughs> if it's under 15, it's okay. So that, that is not dictating how you train? Not really, not really. Because you, you already know what you want to do. I'm 35 now. Uh, I know what key trainings I need. And when you get the time to train for two months, I, I always said you reach automatically that from A to B. There's no rush. There's no... You know what you have to do. This this long run is sleep well, eat well, don't go around. Sometimes I can't even go... I will be here two months and I'll not go down to town in Italy. Yeah. Nobody knows I'm around. So it's just, you know, you know what, what you have to do. And yeah. uh, it, it, automatically you will see you are in shape. And then, like, do you have any kind of mental kind of tricks or, like, instruments that you use to power yourself through, firstly, tough training sessions and secondly, through it race itself? Uh, races is difficult because it, it can change. You have this plan and someone will decide something and hold your plan is gone. Uh, so, but mostly in trainings, it's like, uh, you know what you do when you do marathon, it is less, oh, less painful in, in, in the way of lactate when you are doing like track session you know, or yeah. 10,000 meter training. But it's more the long stuff, the, the long training, the, the kilometers, the laps that is long. And so at the, when you do, let's say for 10 times one mile, the first five, four, it's okay. And then it starts a little bit. But you can handle it, actually. Mm-hmm. And you're supposed to handle it because you're not in lactate. Otherwise, that will be not good training. Yeah. So it, it's just that mental thing. And I'm just like, you know, just do it. It is two minutes to go and you're done. Two minutes to go, you're done. And mostly when you're in the bus or in the, in the car again, you, you are so happy you did the training. So you know what you will feel. And even when I look at the day, oh, tomorrow I have 40K. And I'm like, oh, when shall I come back and see myself outside taking my breakfast, yeah. you know? 40k is done yeah. and before you know you are sitting outside taking breakfast 40k is done so uh, don't make it too difficult time is going fast day is going fast just just uh, do it and you'll always feel bad yeah after. just do it and you will never regret you never regret yeah, yeah. and then in your opinion what makes a great runner like, like are there any qualities that like I think each one is different uh, for me I think it's simplicity would make me good because uh, I, I came from BB of 211 I have run all the times, 211, 210, 29, 28. And then I jumped from 28 to 26. Then I came back to 27 that year. And then 24. So, and I came back to 25. So, it is, um, yeah, don't give up. And as I said, you know, just do it. You just know if you do it, you will not regret. And, and mostly it's, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, I think it's a long answer this because it depends when, when I was starting running. I was able to stop so many times, but I never stopped. So it's what keeps you going. It's like that you believe in yourself, that you believe there is improvement. I will improve. I will not give up. But also, you know, be less less materialistic, by, for example. I was not attached to things. Um, so that also that gave me the ability to continue, to continue, continue, continue. And if you are to go back to your younger self and give yourself one piece of advice is there anything that you kind of go back and like kind of say to yourself or actually I posted a few uh, I think pictures that I was uh, I saw I saw someone was posting and it, it, it touched me so good because it was saying I wish someone told me when, uh, when I was 20 uh, this and that to do it and I was like yeah I told myself when I was 21 you know what I'm gonna move to Kenya uh, these guys they are not from Mars they are just from this planet uh, I'm gonna go there, and I have read that time an article about Dutch woman who was doing table tennis, and she moved to China. And that was time was when it was yeah. the red carpet, what, what they call the red or whatever. Yeah, uh, kind of closed off, like yeah, yeah. closed from, from the world. And she in the 80s, and she went there, and she became world champion. She lived like them, she eat like them, she trained like them, and, and that article was like, you know what? Yeah, I know they are fast. It will take a long time. I took two bags, and I moved to Kenya without and for that for those for the two bags I had for 10 years I had no car I had no I don't want to get anything until now even I don't have house because I'm, I'm very nomadic yeah. I got that lifestyle now do you like, you like me uh, to be able to kind of move around house yeah so that's what what I did when I was 20 you know uh, I was student I called my friends housemates I told them take everything my bed my refrigerator TV for free nobody have paid anything any. take everything and they were just being rock paper sister to who will get which what <laughs> And uh, you know, you know, I'm moving. I want a free bird to be free bird, and I moved. So that was the the, uh, uh, the advice I gave myself when I was young. So 
what else shall I give? I think I will do the same. I will do the same because I will not be in this level if I didn't took that um, take risks. Like. Risk, yeah. Let's say. Well, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. And I'm no wishing you the best of luck in New York. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.